Yeah, man, y'all know what time it is. This Sunday, this ain't my color, man. But shout out to the trades, man. Shout out to Deuces, Four, Sevens, and Trades Up. And that's all day, man. Yeah. Yeah, Deuces, Four, Sevens, and Trades Up. They trade day, man. It's going to be trade day weekend, man. Shout out to all them trades, man. Uh, shout out to my nigga Gator, Northside Gator, man. Shout out to my Northside nigga Renthal, man. O OG Renthal on that Northside, man. Man, R.I.P. the Boogie, man. Four Trade Boogie, man. R.I.P. the Drico, man. R.I.P. the Four Trade Mun, man. You understand me? Yeah, man. I repeat them trades up, man. Trades up, man. Uh, I fuck with, fuck with my nigga Bucci, man. Shout out to the nigga Insane Robber, man. OG Trey nigga, man. The Robber Insane. The four Trey, me here. Right. Yeah, man. Let me, let me, I'll give y'all some stories, goddamn me. Let you know I'm, I'm worldwide with the Trey game, too, man. Uh, right. Uh, uh, I repeat the Insane little, to, uh, little Insane, man. Four Trey, little Insane, man. Uh, let me keep going on these trades, man. Let me keep walking on these trades right quick, man. Uh, I love the trades. Shout out to Boogie, man. Shout out to Wood and Boogie, man. Them trades up, man. R.I.P. to Boogie, man. Uh, yeah. Uh, shout out to the number one four trade, man. Boochie, man. Shout out to man Echo Heights Boochie, man. Shout out to my cousin, Big Maury Reed, man. Real trades up, man. Real what? trades up, man. Maury Reed over there, man. Shout out to them niggas in Echo Heights, EOC, y'all. That's y'all land over there, man. That's Trey land over there. North side what? is really Trey land. Uh, but over here on this side of the neighborhood, Echo Heights is Trey land, man. Shout out to my nigga JD, man. Four Trey JD, man. Yeah, man. Shout out to Four Trey JD, man. Shout out to my motherfucking number one compadre of SA, my amigo, man. Four Trey Jose, man. Shout out to Four Trey Jose, man. Yeah, with the Trey in his head, man. Shout out to my nigga, yeah, Bubba Hendrix. Shout out to Bubba, nigga. The real trades, nigga. Shout out to my nigga Bubba. Trades up, nigga. Yeah, but the number one trade game, nigga. Insane Robert, man. Four Trey Insane, man. Tales from a Crip. I was rapping one time, man, down at the Alibi, man, outside, man. And uh, I met Insane when I first met Insane. Four Trey Insane, man. And uh, shit, um. I remember the nigga pulled me over to the side and said, say, man, let me hear you rap, man. I heard you be rapping. I was looking at the nigga like I don't even know this nigga. Like, who is this nigga right here? But he wants to hear me rap. Right. And the way the, the expression on his face was telling me, man, I must sound good to niggas. He said that I said, you know, he, he liked the way I rap. He said, well, you be the only one nigga I know be on some gangster shit like that, nigga. That's how he talked to me. That's how, that's how insane to talk. I got his swag now. Yeah, you the only nigga be on that gangster shit like that, nigga. Keep doing that shit, nigga. Right. Keep doing that shit that you be doing, nigga. That's how he used to talk to me. And you know, one time I was down there, we was rapping one time, you know, I hit a lick down there at the alibi. Um, we used to rap outside, you know what I'm saying? They would give you an envelope for the winner, the prize winner. So this week I had won about like two weeks in a row on the prize, you know, and I go in there and I collect the prize from the man behind the bar. Right. So um this week I didn't happen to win the prize, but I just happened to walk in the bar, you know, to get me a soda, because I needed me a soda, and the man behind the bar thought that I won. And he just handed me the envelope with the money in it. And I was like, ah, damn. Right. Shit, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take the motherfucking goddamn man. Right, right, right. Shit, I didn't ask for it or nothing. He just, he just thought, you know, I automatically won again this week. Right. He handed me the envelope, and on my way getting my soda, well, the niggas that won was coming in. The, the, the outside crew was coming in, you know, to collect the money behind the bar. So by the time I, I peed gang, I started walking out. I heard a man tell him he just handed the envelope to the nigga that just walked out. I heard the niggas, <laughs> I heard the niggas come running out behind me. Woom, woom, woom. I dipped on my, I dipped. I ran to Fort Trey, I ran uh, Insane a week later on the block. And uh, he was in his car, he was in an El Camino. Tales from a crib with my nigga, with my nigga, Dre, with my nigga Dre Day, man. R.I.P. to Dre Day, man. Me, me, Dre Day, the insane, man. That's a that's a cold combination to see together. Right. If you would have knew the niggas that's in the car together. And I remember I never got no 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 insane was a square business. When we was riding, we was on our gangster shit, the nigga was square business. Uh I, I, I never knew Trace was more gangster, you know, no five deuce niggas. We be on point, right, we right, doing right. our thing, but the Trey gang was was the gangster gang. It was all about gangster shit, Lil' Rob. Lil' Rob was square business. Matter of fact, I hung with Lil' Rob a couple, you know, we, we, we thugged it out a couple of months together. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Uh, he told me to hop in the back of the El Camino, nigga. I know he pulled up on me one day. He said, nigga, nigga, jump in the back of the El Camino, nigga. I know I ain't wait, I ain't hesitate to wait, nigga. I jumped in the back. He took off. We took off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, never forget we riding. He reached, he reached in the car. He hit me. 
reached out to win, hand me a pistol, gave me a gun, and I told me, get that. I'm like, God damn. Okay, shit, where the fuck are we going? I'm in the back. Yeah. Ride like a motherfucker. He flying like hell too. Where are we going? We getting our paid. He just and we gotta be somewhere gangster. So you know me, I um, uh, I go I go I go with proper protocol. I fall in. We going to war. I don't know where we going, but shit. When he gave me this, I can't. I ain't jumped out the back of the truck yet. Yeah. Even at the stop sign, I ain't asked what it's for. Nothing. I just just get ready, nigga. This is when I knew that um, uh, insane for Che Lil Rob was scrap business. Uh. He said, man, this nigga in here old club, some money club. We finna come get this money club. We just need to get in there and get the money club. I said, okay. Wham, I got you. But a nigga came to the door, man. Uh, some nigga come to the door. Big boy. And that's when I looked at little Rob. You know, I'm, I'm playing in the background. Like, what's up? What's, you know, have it go down, nigga. I'm with it. If I see a nigga reach for something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all know I'm scary. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, nigga move around. Nigga. I'm not finna play with you. Yeah. I know if it might be more two or three and a half. Tales from a crib, man. He went up to the door. I never seen the action on little Rob's face. How quick he turned into insane. Yeah, he was little Rob when he walked up there and asked the nigga, say, do you got such and such? We need to come get there. And the nigga said, say, man, uh, we ain't got that right now. So you got to come back. And Cuz was taking no coming back. I turned, I seen little Rob turn into insane. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, the shit y'all call him. That's his first name. Remember y'all call him insane little Rob? Well, I seen the insane part. Right. How quick his mind flipped. Right. He went to the car and he was like, God damn, we finna get Yeah, and he grabbed he grabbed his little old thing. We come up to the door. The nigga, the nigga, nigga made the nigga turn the back wood off the back door. And he come up out that house. We couldn't get through that front. We made it out, but I seen we'd have got up in there, it would have been some deadly repercussions on this nigga. I happened to know the nigga that answered the door. R.I.P. to the big homie Big Ray, man. Big Ray man passed through the coronavirus, man. Big Ray off little John, man. Damn. Yeah, uh. Passed through the corona, man, you know. I had, when, when, when they saying them, you know, they drove me out. I'm like, God damn, that was close, man. Shit, we finna have to fuck out Big Ray. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm mean? saying? I couldn't even act like I you know, God damn, Big Ray. Damn, what you done did, Big Ray? Yeah. And I come back to all that Big Ray. Big Ray was gone. This is this, this real talk. Tell from the crib, I come back to the same trap. Beat on the door and holler and go in there and ask for Big Ray. When I walk in the trap, it was a lady up in the trap. The lady hand me a, uh, a sack, a sack full, a $3,500 worth of 50 piece. A sack full of 30, it's thirty five hundred dollars worth of fifties in that sack. She handed it to me, said, "Man, I don't got no trouble. I don't want nothing to do with that. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Her man, you can have this. You can leave." I'm like, "God damn!" And she ran out the door. I said, "God damn!" She, I went and closed the front door back, and I did just like the other nigga did. I went through the back door, I peeled the back door, and I jumped again and I left. Thirty five hundred dollars worth of fifties. I'm like, "God damn!" I went to the house, I went to counting up, and then I got a phone call. And a nigga told me on the phone, he'll never forget who he is. I know he is. We call him the main man. That's all y'all need to know. He'll know who I'm talking about when I say that for it. Man, I call him the main man. He said, say, nigga, you think you gonna make it out that house before I get to you? I'm like, who the fuck is this? He said, nigga, where my shit at? Now, now number one, I ain't robbed nobody and took nothing. The bitch did a handoff to me like we were coming out the backfield. You heard? The bitch is down, said, huh. I walked in the house, the bitch... <coughs> Gave me a handout, I took the handout, went through the back door and scored the touchdown. You understand me? Uh. The nigga got on the phone and said, nigga, you think you gonna make it out that house before I get there? I'm like, nigga, who is this? And I went to picking out windows and shit. <laughs> nigga, who is this? He said, nigga, where my shit at? Chick said she gave you all my shit, nigga, what you do with it? I said, nigga, uh, this who? Nigga, this such and such, nigga, where my shit at? Oh, nigga, I put that shit in the oven, in the oven. He said, oh, you put it in the oven? Yeah, yes, yeah, in the oven. He said, oh shit, I ain't looking there. Let me go back and check. My bad, man. Well, if he going back to check, they give me time to get out this goddamn house and tear my goddamn head, you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> I had to buy me some time. You hear me? I was like, I was buying some time. You hear me? Yeah. Um, the nigga was already parked outside when he called. Outside your house? Or? Right across, diagonal across the street, down the street. Yeah, you know, if I were a square bitch, when you fuck with real niggas. Yeah, you gotta know, and I always fuck with real niggas. <laughs> yeah. Even when I go to fuck over niggas, I don't fucking know the real niggas. And they'll come get the peons and the penny niggas and the diamond nickel niggas. Now, nah, I need I need the plug or the socket, one of the two. Yeah. You dig when I'm coming? Yeah. I ain't wasting my life for nothing. You hear me? For no pennies. You dig yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah. I'm coming so on. Yeah, man. Um, I let the plug get away that time, and that plug. Remember, when I ran up on him. He was on my block. I caught up with the plug. The phone call club. The one the same nigga asked me whether I was gonna be at the house with such and such. Now, 
And he my nigga right now today. Yeah. He my nigga right now today. But when I ran up on him, it was the same story and I jumped out. And he didn't know he had scared me. And I wasn't coming to play and he was my own partner. But I knew if he was gonna play that way with me, I was gonna have to play that way with him too. And now was the time to play. Yeah. And I forgot this nigga played chess too. <laughs> He happened to be one of my partners. He happened to play. He know I love him to death right now. He know I'm talking. But he played chess too. And at them times, in them days, that shit could have turned out ugly between me and him. Even when he had a chance to be him. When he asked me, was I think I was going to make it out that house? That let me know he had it on his mind. That hurt my feelings. That scared me. So I felt when I had to catch him, I was going to do the same thing. But I was going to pursue. I was going to be in a pursuit of happiness when I caught him. Yeah, I was going to make sure. Yeah, and I caught him. And I jumped out on him. And he played chess on me. He said, you know what, nigga? I had to thought about something. I'm like, what, nigga? My jaw was jumping, everything, nigga. I, I ain't come to talk. And you know, for some reason, I knew right then that you knew that. I didn't come to talk. He said, but he came to talk. He played chess. He made his first move on the board. He said, say, you know what, nigga? I thought about something. I ain't had no business calling you like that. He said, you ain't the person I gave you to work to. I gave it to them. I didn't have no business. He said, mind my bad on it. Damn, boy. I mean, I can't. That was, that was a solid move. Because he said some real shit. He said, I didn't give you the work. I gave them the work. Right. I should have been on their ass. Be fat, fat. Yeah. It, it don't matter how you got it. You didn't right. take it from me. Right. You didn't steal it. You didn't rob or nothing. You right. It was given to you. I didn't give it to you. I gave it to them. They need to give me my money. Yeah, because that, that worst work, that, that, yeah, cause that's gone. Yeah, that's all that's gone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Been a lot of tricking going on since then. Shit, boy. Shit, I, I ain't come back until I can remember my name. Yeah. Oh, there was a lot of tricking going on then, boy. What? I was giving away shit like it was crazy. Oh, so you didn't even go back and try to put it in the oven? What? I bet not. Shit, no. Nah. What, what? It was never in the oven to begin with. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that how they say it? Yeah. It was never in the oven. It say, I had to buy time. I was playing chess too. Yeah. The, the oven move was a chess move. To get how, but how did you know he was down the street though? I looked out the window and seen it when he passed by. I know how niggas play. Only fake niggas don't believe in niggas. But when you ain't got so much shit for a nigga to call you, they got to be close. For a nigga to say you think you're going to make it out the house before I get to you, you got to be in the area. Yeah. Yeah, and I spotted you down the street, parked on the other side of the street. Yeah, I lived on Pacers at Echo Heights back then. Shout out to the Trey Game, man. Boochie and you know, man. Yeah. Shout out to Insane Four Trey Rob, man. Say, man, I remember one time, Tales from a Crip, nigga. Y'all wanna know how good my fucking hands is, fuck niggas. Tales from a Crip, nigga. Insane Rob, Four Trey Rob. Tell them niggas how good my hands is, man. Say, yeah. Tell them niggas how good my hands is, Tales from a Crip. I remember one time, man, me and Rob, I was, I was coming up on Rob, man. I caught Rob on the front porch, man. And, uh, little Rob, you know, he, he, you know, you know, he, he a gangster too. Shout out to his brother Pusshead, man. So little Rob wanted to test my gangster. I remember little Rob ran out in the middle of the street, met me in the middle of the street with his hand. And me and Rob, we, 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 we took out, we, we took out at the same time. Little Rob girl was on the porch at the time. Four Trey Little Bubble was out there. And, uh, Right then, we, we, we seen right then, when we traded them couple of hits in the street, we better quit right now. Yeah. But that's all I got to say about that. But ask for Trey, insane, little Rob, am I certified, nigga? Yeah. Fuck you now. I don't got nothing to prove to none of these niggas. Trey's up, nigga. I fuck with Fo Trey. And that's when Insane stayed on. Insane stayed right there, goddamn, across from motherfucking SS Dillo school. I steal all the dogs and take them to little Rob. Insane little Rob was the only nigga had dogs in his backyard that looked like real fucking human beings, nigga. Yeah. Nigga taught me about the dog game, man. He taught me how to up the the upgrade. You know, back in the days, Keith Holmes had all the good dogs. Keith Holmes had all the good dogs. Uh, it was another nigga. I forgot his goddamn name. He had all the good dogs. I'll think of that later. But uh, but goddamn me, uh, that Southside little Rob, man, four tray insane, man. Had, had some of the best killer litters I'm talking about when we come down to dog fighting, dog scratching. Say nigga dogs didn't play dogs was, was built to last, uh. Insane taught me one thing, uh, tales from a crib. A lot of tell from for this this trade day, man. So I'm on these trades today, man. Yeah. I'm on these trades. Four trade, insane, little Rob, man, uh. The OG, nigga, the OG over the 
If it wasn't for old, if it wasn't for um, uh, insane, wouldn't be no trades, nigga. Besides Bucci, no Bucci, shout out to Bucci, you did your part, but when it come down that insane four trade crib game, nigga, on that gangster on that south side, come on, cuz. Didn't get no gangsters in folks. Little Rob, man. Yeah. And uh, trades up, man. Uh. That nigga got that insane, goddamn, he come get me one day and uh. We on the south side, man, and uh, a nigga pulled up on Little John Block one time. I just talked about Big Ray, the same Big Ray we went to go peel the dough down on. Uh, R.I.P. the Big Ray, man. Um, Big Ray had had him a dog, and Insane taught me something about dogs. You know, he taught me, you know, my dog is like me. And, you know, I'm like, God damn, your dog beat up, ugly, raggedy, a half a ear and shit. <laughs> look like he got damn, be, look like he did um, throw grease in his face or something. He cut up, beat up and shit. And I looked at Little Rob, and Insane, you was an ugly ass nigga too, though. You were ugly too. God damn, you had a big head, beat up, let something down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that was my nigga Insane. But you know, but he taught me something. Uh, your dog is a reflection of you. Right. And he taught me that when he pulled up on the block, and he pulled up one day, and he had, and, and this nigga had a dog on side of the house. This nigga had got him some kind of, my nigga Big Ray had got him some kind of game dog, he felt like. And my nigga Insane, Little Rob, pulled up on the block. And me, him, and Dre, they and JD was out there chopping it up. And uh, Big Ray went to talking shit to uh, Insane. <laughs> Big Ray went to talking in shit to Insane. Telling Insane, little Rob, nigga, I got something for your dog. Now, 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 Insane had a bad motherfucker. Insane, I can't remember the name of your dog. I don't want to goddamn me uh, just dry say something. But I can't remember that black dog that you had. But you had a bad black motherfucker with a big ass head. And that nigga said something about Insane Dog, man. And Insane was in the middle of the street getting mad. Right. Like, like I'm looking at Insane like, why this nigga get mad like this about the dog, man? Yeah. And Insane, nigga, what you talking about, cuz? What you talking about on trades, cuz on trades? Cuz, I'll be back, cuz. I'll be back, nigga. Nigga, go get your dog, nigga, whatever, nigga. Big Ray was out there bumping about his dog, and he was running Insane crazy about Cause insane feel like nigga, my dog ain't here to protect himself. You talking, you know what, nigga, I'll be back. So insane, you know, he burnt out. You know what I'm saying, man? Insane gone. I'm pissed. I said, nigga, right there acting all that crazy about a dog. You dig what I'm saying? Insane right. tripping, man. They like, man, that nigga ain't coming back. You no, know, man. It had been about like an hour ahead went by. You understand, man? We heard the bass coming down the street, and that nigga, I seen that nigga hitting that El Camino. Boom, boom. He, he, he came with a car with a trunk, had some bass in it. Man, the, the trunk was bassing so motherfucking hard, you can hear the bass all the way on Miller to Peyton Street. We was on the Fort Trey side of, yeah. To get that right, you know, Little John got a 40 deuce on this side, and we got us a Trey side too, nigga. Yeah. We got a four Trey side, yeah, for all you niggas that don't know your history, that live on Little John Street. Yeah, we had the 43rd side too, the four Trey side, nigga, where the Trey's nigga hung out, where the nigga JD hung out, the nigga Little, uh, yeah, the nigga Dre Day hung out, the nigga OG Percy hung out, the nigga Ant hung out, yeah, nigga Big Ray hung out. Then was our Stone, yeah, Chris G hung out on the Trey side, nigga, yeah, uh. Uh, 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 damn, what's my nigga name? Ears. He hung out on the trace side. You understand me? A lot of niggas came up on the trace side. We were gangsta on the other end. Right. He had the 40 do side down there too, a little jump. Right, right. But anyway, Insane come around that corner, being that corner with that dog, with all his bass in the trunk. Okay, I'm looking like, God damn, nigga. He jumped, they say, nigga, what's up now, cuz? What's up now, cuz? What's up now, cuz? He throwing up the trays, trays up, cuz. And I never forget, Big Ray had took his dog. And put his dog in the backyard. The one he said he was talking to big shit had a bad motherfucker. And he had his mama um uh, a poodle. Nice little old, you know, with the motherfucking bow wrapped in his head and everything. Pretty little beauty. They had that motherfucker tied up on the porch. And I remember uh, this nigga got out and then he said, Cuz, where your dog at, Cuz? Where your dog at? And this nigga trying, he just basically, I'm like, well, shit, he ain't even got a dog. He ain't even got a dog. So the nigga went in the backyard and said, nigga, I got mine. I got man, man, that nigga insane went to the trunk and popped that trunk. Say, man, this dog head come up out that motherfucker about this big. I know this dog gotta be crazy. All this motherfucking bass this nigga got in the back of this trunk. I'm talking with the trunk, boom, and the dog is in there. I know this dog crazy in oh, the he, he had the dog back there? Then the dog been back there the whole time. Shit, that nigga ain't playing no game. Insane raised killers. Insane said, did he say, insane, your dog is a reflection of you? You know that dog crazy in the motherfucker. You heard me? And nigga popped that trunk up and he was looking for the anything. He said, man, bring your motherfucking dog on, whole ass nigga. So I'm like, God damn. I said, woo, this dog here, God damn me, this motherfucking big, man. Tell him, man, about this man. God damn, where he get that motherfucker here? 
God damn, man, don't go get that dog, man. She, he said, somebody's gonna get it. I'm not playing, cool. Go get that motherfucking dog. He took that bitch off the leash, man. He was sitting in the bed, ran up, the dog ran up there and took, up, took out the man. Mama pulled her off the porch. Nah. Stop. Inside the square bin on crib, he was square business. You understand me? Well, that means something, something, it, it catch something the to play, nigga. It catch the poodle? Oh, yeah, right off the rip. Oh, the poodle man. got that work. Oh, the poodle got the work, nigga, man. right off the rip. Come on. Mm. Until Cud went to the side of the house and run the, the victim around the house, and he, he, he let that big dog run up there and scratch on that bitch a little bit until the mama went to complain enough and we got him from over there. Right. Yeah. Shout out to my nigga Four Trey, man, Rob, insane little Rob, man. Um. And niggas just come to the Rob and tell the Rob, man, OG yeah, person, did he bring you this? Did he bring you my dog over here now, man? And Rob was always a square bit nigga. Shout out to Four Trey Bubba, his side, his sidekick. That was his sidekick, Bo Four Trey Bubba, man. Bubba Hendricks, what's cracking, cuz? I ain't gonna never forget the real nigga, the real Trey gang niggas that started the shit. Yeah, shout out to Bucci, man. I met Bucci sitting in the front yard one time, nigga, when Bucci had all his motherfucking senses, nigga. When Bucci looked like he was on the OG of the motherfucking block when I used to walk, I used to come off Paker Street, man, and go down Echo uh, Eastover Street. Bucci stayed on the corner right there at his mama house, two houses from the corner right there. Yeah, niggas. Yeah, y'all ain't gonna miss me with this trade game shit either, man. But shout out to my real trade nigga. I wanna tell a story right quick, man. This gonna be my story, not y'all niggas' story. I give a fuck what y'all niggas think. Shout out to Four Trade nigga. Little Trouble nigga. Yeah. Tell us from a crib nigga. The Little Trouble story, cause it's my, 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 my motherfucking story. With me and Little Trouble. I met Little Trouble when he was a young nigga, cuz. In Echo Heights. Him and Drico, man. Shout out to the Federal Rally Boys, man. They call themselves the Federal Rally Boys. It was Drico, Spider, and Little Trouble, man. That's the first little rap group y'all had out of there. Yeah. You understand? First little rap group that came out of Echo Heights, man. They call themselves the Federal Rally Boys. Y'all was nice. Nice. Y'all had three hard hitters, Spider G. Nice. Drico, majorly nice. Trouble, nice and living the life. Trouble was a young nigga. I used to go scope from trouble all the time. Young nigga had a little cone, a little red, a little pink, a little uh, yellow and white ass on the corner. And every time running, it'd be Draco up in there. Draco Spider and his little bright partner. Boy, I, I don't want to, I'm going to say you're a little bright name, but you the little bright nigga with the good hair. Everybody know who you was. I can't remember your name, cuz. But you, but you was in with him too, the little bright nigga. The, the yellow nigga, you, you going to come on and find who I'm talking about. The little bright nigga with the good, the good ass hair. Damn, I wish I could remember your name, little homie. You even stayed around the corner from me a little bit. But, um, say, uh, it was them niggas, man. And, uh, Trouble was the truth. Trouble used to come to my house in my garage. He wanted to learn how to get his raps together more better than he could write. You know, but he didn't know how to rap just too good, but he wanted to be a good rapper. And he kept saying, when I learned how to rap, man, we get my shit. So, Trouble, I was like, Trouble, what you be doing? Man, I just be out here, you know, selling my little old drill, doing my little thing. He, he was a gangster. The little nigga was a gangster, but he was a player gangster. Yeah. He was a real player against the man, and he, he, he liked the flowers, good rings, good jewelry, and he was a young nigga. Yeah. He was a young nigga putting the old niggas on in the hood. Mm. Yeah, that was a little trouble. He got a lot of respect. Yeah, yeah, he got that. He earned that. He earned that. He didn't fuck with everybody. He wouldn't talk to everybody. He knew what snitches was. Trouble had, I mean, uh, he never just got caught up because niggas just talked a lot. But Trouble, you know, he, he moved fast. Trouble was a young nigga that moved fast. Move fast. When I move, move fast, man, he, he put his money up and he, and he show his money. You know what I'm saying? The first nigga came out of Echo Heights, nigga. Damn, do the um, a a a, a, a Ville Cadillac. Came to that motherfucker and he had the rainbow chameleon on there. Not the dark chameleon shit. He had the rainbow chameleon, the high colors. The sky blue, the sky yellow, the sky orange, the sky, yeah. yeah. The sky green on shit. Turn the light part. Now this other chameleon shit is like the dark. Brown, the dark orange, the dark, the now later colors. Yeah. He had the rainbow color chameleon Cadillac. You understand me? Showing niggas his money. Showing niggas his money. Uh, Federati boys. Drico. Uh, Spider G in little trouble, man. Only one live right now, Spider G, man. Uh. Them niggas was the truth, man. Yeah. Trouble, trouble was the truth, man. Uh, one of these guys, matter of fact, shout out to little trouble, son. All right, Peter, little trouble, man. I met your son, man. I met your son, little trouble. Your son came to me and he wanted to say, what is his daddy like? What was his daddy like? His daddy was real flamboyant. Son he, came he, up, pulled up in my house after I mentioned him one time on Diamond Stone TV and came and found me and said he never met his daddy like that. 
Can I tell him something about his daddy? What? And I'm telling him a story about his daddy. Now his daddy was a real sporty nigga. First nigga with the grills in his goddamn mouth in Echo Heights. The first nigga with a lot of everything in Echo Heights. You understand? A lot of niggas hated on him. A lot of niggas hated on Little Trump. He was real polo. Yeah, he said, you know, that, he, he, you know he, he'll figure everything. Polo everything. Polo golf hat on. You know what I'm saying? Me polo shirt on with the polo golf shoes or something. Yeah. He was real clean. Real spiffy nigga. You know what I'm saying? Before the, before the other shit came out, he was already living the, the jury and, and all that. Young nigga. Young little trouble, man. Nigga, you know, uh, the beef between him and another nigga in the hood. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to even make that nigga name relevant. Uh, uh, but beef between him and other niggas in the hood, you know, kept him getting into shit. But he always was a real nigga. Trouble just wanted to be a good rapper and a flamboyant nigga. Trouble didn't give a fuck about money and nothing. Trouble jumped out the car at the motherfucking red light on Martin and Miller one time and left the Cadillac. Told nigga tow that motherfucker. He ain't want to go to jail. Cause you left your Cadillac? Man, fuck that car. I get another one. That's what, that what the type of shit little Trouble say. Young nigga, nigga, how you gonna get another nigga sitting on, sitting on big rims, still spinning? He said, fuck that car. Jumped out that car and jim. Tell him loud they can have that motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he didn't carry his money. His money was doing it like that. I pulled up the Echo Tales from a crib, nigga. I pulled up the Echo Heights one night. A nigga ran up on me, said, man, they just killed Little Trouble. Couldn't believe it, man. Little Trouble sitting in my garage many nights with me, writing his raps. Writing. We had a song called Cowards. Talk a lot of shit in a safe place, but can't look a nigga eye to eye when he in your face. That was a song that me and Trouble was doing. Cowards. It was called, the song was titled Cowards. And of course it was called Cowards, they talk a lot of shit in a safe place, but can't look a nigga eye to eye when they in your face. In, in, in trouble, that would let me know trouble was going through shit in the hood anyway. You dig what I'm saying? You know, the shit he wanted to talk about in his raps was mostly niggas hating on him. Or hating on what he had. Or what he got. Uh. Tales from a crib. Because I got the tales from the Crips. This is a tale from a crib because I got this tale from the Crips. Mm. And I'm going to tell y'all how I got the tale from the Crips. Uh. Trouble got killed. I, I couldn't sleep right or rest right. I'm not from Echo Heights. I'm not a trait. Uh. But I did more investigation than, than, niggas, did, than niggas did than wanted to. There was a lot of investigation going on on Trouble's killing. And um, I went to speak at Trouble's wake that night. And uh, there's a cat walked down the aisle to me during the wake time. Now, number one, I was really pissed off at Trouble's wake because how they carried on at the wake. Number one, I was trouble was a real little nigga. And his, if you knew his grandparents now and his mom now, you know what I'm saying? I mean, y'all would have known trouble came up around some good household people. You dig what I'm saying? Um, doing trouble frontal, we was at Williams Frontal Home. R.I.P. the Williams Frontal Home. It's no longer exist anymore. Um, you know, and, and, and that's a whole different story. We can talk about Williams Frontal Home too. And um, It's right down Ramey? Yeah, it was, it was right on Ramey, man. Right across from the church. You know? Right from the church, yeah. They would host frontal homes, but they would never have order. You know what I'm saying? Like a ghetto fucking frontal home or some shit. And uh, so when uh, trouble, when the trouble waking up, uh, I was going to speak. And I got out the eye and I looked at how things was going, how the mama was crying, how the door was wide open, and everybody was standing around and niggas walking around talking and shit was going on and everything was going on and, and everything. And I was looking around. I never forget to myself. I said, man, I know trouble don't want this shit to be like this, man. It's just wide open, man. It was so hot in the building, man. It seemed like the body could have been sweating. Uh, the mom was crying. The grandma was crying. They was grieving over Little Trouble. Little Trouble had a lot of homeboys in Echo Heights. Trouble had a lot of partners, a lot of friends. A lot of people liked Trouble, man. Trouble was a good kid. Heart by heart. Uh, the last time I seen Trouble alive, he had, Trouble had did some time. I get back to the front. Trouble had did some time, and I, and I was riding down the street, and I heard a nigga blowing fast, and his lights on the side of me. And, um, uh, I looked to the side, and I looked, seen a nigga with some braids in his head. This little trouble. I pulled off, um, uh, right here by the hitching post. Over here by the hitching post, over here is the, um, a boys and girl club right there. Uh, I pulled over inside that boys and girl club, um. It's a rec center. Rec center. Yeah. That place, that building yeah. there, I pulled in that parking lot. Eugene McCrate. Trouble Rex. pulled, yes, sir. I, that's where I pulled it. And uh, Trouble pulled on side of me. He got out, we started talking. He was hugging me, nigga, what you doing? What you got? I said, man, I, I got, he always wanted to hear me rap. 
He said I want as cold as rappers and uh. Yeah. I told him at this time I was on my feet. I made me some CDs. He said, man, give me. I was trying to put something in your pocket. You know what I'm saying? I was like, shit, little Trump. And I don't know. I needed some money. I had my uh Caprice. I was driving a comedian Caprice at the time. He would like the way I was rolling. And uh, he said, what the CDs going for, man? Just ten dollars, man. She he said, give me four of them. And we put one in this car, one in that car, my other car, and we one in the house. I'm like, shit, he's like, man, goddamn, man, keep doing your things. Last time I seen Lil Trouble, he wanted my CD so bad. Uh, the next time I seen Lil Trouble, I was walking down the aisle and I was putting a CD in his coffin, in his hand. I, that, that was my CD, the CD that uh, Lil Trouble had in his hand that he had in his coffin. I, I, and I propped it off in there so he could take one with him, because that's the last time I seen it. And, uh, it hurt my feelings and I seen the way the funeral, the weight was being carried on. You know, a lot of people showed up, but for not for the occasion. And uh, I felt like I had to say something and do something. So I told my little brother, get on the piano at the wake. I went to the front of the wake at Williams Front Home. I went to the front and uh, I asked the front home, man, could he close the doors? All they want to come in, let them come in. All they want to stay out, let them stay out. But we need to, you know, pay respects to trouble, man. Close the doors. Too much. Outside talking, coming inside a private building. What people don't understand, I don't give a damn if somebody land there dead or not, this still God's house. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um, what troubled me the most, what made me get up and say something, it was a young guy that got up that they was letting you know, do their little things. And this guy got right up in front of um, the family and said, This the last rap that me and Trouble was doing together. And I was just sitting back listening. And he said, These motherfuckers, this, and these summer bitches, this, these hoes, this, and these motherfuckers, this, and these motherfuckers, pow, pow, and shoot, shoot. And I looked at this cat. And I tell myself, That's enough is enough right then. And this was that little Trouble's weight. I told my little brother, Get on, like I said, little brother, Get on the piano. I went to the front. And I told him, Ask the man, can he please close the doors? I see the preachers didn't even have order, enough respect for God's. Temple at this time to have order in the front of home. Yeah. You understand me? Um, and so I, I asked the question in the front of home. I never forget. I asked the question at the wake. Who all know little trouble that's in here? You know, I see a lot of y'all in here. Everybody against the walls and standing up. The, and I asked the question. I never forget that wake. I asked who all know this young man that's laying here in this coffin. You know, raise your hand. Do anybody know? Do anybody know him that's in here right now? Because the thing was, if y'all know this young man, if y'all know this young man, you wouldn't be cussing like that in front of his grandmama, in front of his mama, little homie. You just got up here and did a whole rap with number cussing and rapping in front of this man's grandma, grieving, crying mama that's crying, and you cussing in front of her, man. He wouldn't have let you cuss in front of his grandmama if you knew him. You can't know him. You can't know him. You dig what I'm saying? You can't be sitting there talking like that and y'all acting like this, saying y'all know this man and y'all see his parents up here, his grandmama and his mom going through what they going through right now. And nobody's hugging him or current. Right. You dig at this time. Right. And I took God, not me, but God had to show me something in me right then that I had something, that he had something to do for me right then. That was years ago. Right. Years, decades ago. Um. A guy walked down the front of the home, Al, at that time, he walked up to my ear and he said, he told me something in my ear that I'm going to tell y'all out loud because I'm not going to never mention this cat's name. Uh, he said, man, can you tell him that I didn't have nothing to do with that? Him getting killed. <sighs> this dude walked down the front of the aisle while I was up at the front. And if anybody that was there, they remember that, they'll remember the guy that did it. He told me in my ear, tell him that I didn't have nothing, man, can you please tell him I didn't have nothing to do with that? Me, at this time, I didn't feel like this was the right time to bring up none of that. You get what I'm saying? That ain't what I'm up here for. To say, hey, man, his dude, he didn't have nothing. Nah. Because my thing is, if you had something to do with it, we're going to find out that after the front. Or after this wait. That's another Because that was something new to me. Yeah. I didn't even know your name came up in that. That's my partner laying right there. Your name came up in that? My whole way of thinking when I finished talking at the wake that I walked out the wake and I grabbed that same guy. I said, come ride with me, homie. I took that same guy, Tales from a Crip. That same guy that walked up to me in the front and I told him, come ride with me after the wake. And guess where I took him after the wake? Mm. I took him straight to that nigga neighborhood where everybody was having a barbecue at. I took him straight to that nigga neighborhood. 
His neighborhood. His own neighborhood. Where they was having a barbecue at. At my nigga K Vaughn house. Yeah. On East Over Street. Yeah. I pulled up with that same nigga in the car. Yeah. That everybody was talking about had something to do with something. That everybody. Because guess what? My thing. If he had something to do with it. Right, we going to ride off with him right now. He never. Be, yeah. I got him with me. But this is my partner too. This is one of my little homies too. Uh. The nigga that was in the house, yeah, was in the backyard when Trouble got killed. The nigga that was in the house when Trouble got killed was in the backyard at the barbecue after the wait. But all them niggas came to the front. I, I did this cuz on Crip. I came to Cave on East Over Street with cuz with me. And I told the nigga that was in the house, come to the front and let us know what's going on. Cuz you the one answer the door, right? Because, yeah, it was a big story, see, that was a whole bunch of bullshit, because Trouble was my little nigga. I feel like when a nigga answer the door and the niggas don't answer the door like this, I just want to make some sense. I ain't trying to open up no cases, I ain't trying to open up no feelings. I just want to open up some senses. I feel like if a nigga come to the door and he didn't come like this, and he answer the door and you open the door, nigga, that means you seen who them people was. Cause they didn't come like this. And the nigga was in the backyard, he the one open the door. And them niggas didn't come like that. They didn't come like this. So if they didn't come like this, he should know them faces when he see them faces. And this nigga stay in your neighborhood. This should definitely be a face that you would recognize. If this was one of the faces that came to the door. Right. I got one question for this nigga right here. Is this one of the faces that came to the door? <laughs> He dropped his head and said, nah. He gave me a no. And I'm not going to even lie, because when you gave me that no, that no wasn't even a, 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 a respect for no. It wasn't even a no that I could say, you know what I'm saying, I told you. I don't like the no. It was a, a shaky no. A, 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 a could have been no. It wasn't no solid no, man, no. Because number one, if you ask me, look at cuz, this nigga came, I'm like, hell no, nah, nigga, ain't him now, nah, fool. That's my nigga right there. Now he ain't the one came to the door. That ain't, that ain't the reply I got. But we gotta know. So that clears this one. You dig what I'm saying? It clears it. And the sad thing about it, a day later, nigga went and shot this man in his neck. Tried to kill his man. Rode up behind him and gunned him down while he was sitting in the back of his car and shot him in his neck. Tried to kill him. Lucky that he had box. That he had, lucky that he had a speaker box and an amp and shit in the back of his motherfucking seat. Or them bullets would have killed him. Yeah. Yeah. They shot that man down. And the sad part about it, when it all was said and done, that man didn't even lie. He didn't have nothing to do with it. He didn't know nothing about it. He didn't have nothing to do with it. He was just an enemy. He was just somebody that, that didn't like trouble like the rest of you niggas look, but he didn't want to see nothing like that happen to trouble. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't to blame. The court system found out who the blame was. We found out who the blame was. Shit, I ain't saying no name. Shit, y'all can look it up. Y'all can find out who the blame was through that. You dig what I'm saying? But anyway, it wasn't that man. It's Trey Day, man. It's Trey, nigga. Trey's up, man. Trey Day to my nigga, Little Trouble, man. All right, Peter, Little Trouble. I went to Little Trouble front of the next day, and I went in there talking. I was kicked out by the preacher. Everybody that went to Trouble front <laughs> remember me. I'm the one that got put out while I was up there talking. <laughs> when they cut my mic out, yeah, because I was up there telling the truth. Today's preachers could understand what I was saying, but back then, them day preachers, they couldn't understand. I was speaking to the youth back then, something that they couldn't do. They didn't know how to do, and it sounded like I was talking against them. Um, I said, um, I said something about the preachers need to raise up and start lifting the Lord up. Cause nothing but hearing his name can make me toss it up. What a rush. I can feel him flowing in my blood, but nevertheless. It ain't too many people out there showing love, but I'm blessed. Trouble, you can see it in his eyes. Ask me why. He was out here trying to save youngsters lives. Cause they said the youngsters die young. And they don't know what's wrong. But I'm just out here trying to tell the kids what's really going on. They say preach this, but don't preach that. So what y'all saying? Listen to the preacher, don't listen to rap. Y'all better quit playing. And my mic went boom. 
before they cut it off. The preacher thought I was up there talking about him and some shit and thought he was involved. And now we don't do all that up in here. Now, you might don't do all that up in here. But I'm not up here talking to you. They understood more than you did. You understand me? He cut my mic off and I walked down the middle of the aisle and I walked out the door. And tears came in my eyes. Because trouble would love that. But since the preachers don't have enough ear for the real word, they just got an ear for the Bible, not the spirit. He lost it. And everybody that came out to me after that service said I was doing a good job. Thank you, person, man. Thanks for speaking. Thanks, man. You know, didn't nobody say he went up there and went crazy. That's the one who went up there and went to talking stupid. That's the one who went up now. Didn't nobody see it like that but the preachers, but the young niggas did. And I guarantee you, right now today, that same preacher wished that he could take that back. You hear me? Right now today, I bet he do. Yeah, he could take that back. That's been over 20-something years. Little Trouble been gone. R.I.P. the four trade Little Trouble, man. Yeah. Tales from a crib, niggas. Mm-mm.